Exodus 12 is Romans 6. Paul said that it's grace, Romans 5, 20, 21, that is sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans chapter 6 said, For how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Can That's you put right. that with me? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Like as God raised him up from the dead, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Amen. I'm a new creature, therefore I have to, I must be or should be walking in newness of life. Right. right. Hey. Trying to look at that thing he talked about now that we have been Passed from death to life. Now that we are we are no longer dead to God, we're now dead to sin and alive to God. Right. Now then, now then, we can have victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, though I'm not going to preach on the entirety of this text, we've already preached on most of it. I'm going to preach on the latter part. Let me, let me just remind you without going through it and reading in chapter 13. Uh, we talked about God bringing them out in chapter 12 by the blood of the Lamb. I'll speak about that more in a minute. And then in chapter 13, if you'll notice, uh, God is preparing to actually bring them across the Red Sea and over into a land of victory. Thank God. Amen. Thank God. I'm glad. Thank God. No I'm there no more. Yeah. There is a place of victory. Hallelujah. Amen. Not just when we cross the divide and go to be with the Lord. But thank God we can achieve a certain amount of victory down here. Amen. If we'll just live for Him and trust Amen. Him. Now, when we dealt with these passages and verses 1 through 4, we, looked, we began to look at that thought of the commands that are attached to the Exodus. And there were three commands that we looked at, the commands that were attached to the Exodus. Number one in verse three, that day was to be remembered. Remember ye this day. In verse five through 13, that day was to be revisited. God sent, set aside once a day, week, and once a year to revisit that day. That day wasn't only to be remembered and to be revisited, but in verse 14 through 16, that day was to be rehearsed. He said, your children will talk to you and ask you in time to come, what mean you by the us? And we dealt with that last week, and I'm telling you, God helped us last Sunday. Now that that day is to be rehearsed, we're to tell our children why we do what we do. Right. And so there's the commands that are attached to the Exodus. I want to talk to you today not only on the commands that are attached to the Exodus, but in verse 17 through 22, there is what I call the cloud that accompanies the entrance. Amen. Did you get that? The commands that are attached to the Exodus, verses 1 through 16. But then there is the, the cloud that accompanies the entrance. Look at verse 17. And it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, lest preadventure the people repent when they see war and they return to Egypt. But God led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea, and the children of Israel went up harnessed out of the land of Egypt. And Moses took the bones of Joseph, for he had straightly sworn uh, when Moses took the bones of Joseph with him. For he had straightly sworn the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and ye shall carry up my bones away hence with you. Let me say just a word. I know you may be in God's handy. But uh, according to the book of Hebrews, Joseph spoke this by faith. 
by faith he believed that the land that God was going to put them in was going to cross that river. Amen. He knew that. And he said this, when you go, when you go, he said, God's going to visit you. And God's going to lead you out of this awful land. And when you go, I want you to take my bones with you. And they, they got their bones and they, took, they carried them. Thank God, 40 years. Could you get this? Somebody had the charge of carrying the bones of Joseph. And he got over there into the land uh, and he took the bones and buried them in the same place of the cave of Machpelah uh, where Abraham and his wife were buried. Amen. You know why? He made up his mind this. He said in resurrection morning, I want to get up on the right side of everything. Amen. I want to get up in the resurrection morning with the people of God. Amen. 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 You can preach right there. That's beyond the scope of what we're dealing with. Verse 20. They took their journey from Succoth and uh, encamped in Etham in the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them by day and a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way and by night and a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and by night. He took God away the pillar of the cloud by day, or the pillar of fire by night, from before the people. Our Father in Jesus' name, thank you for the privilege to be here yes, and God to preach a few minutes this morning. I pray you'd help me to expound the Word of God, Lord, with sensitivity to the Holy Ghost, and, and Lord, give everybody that listens that same sensitivity, I pray. And Lord, help us now. We need you in every way. I'm yeah. weak and undone without you. I pray you'd help me. Bless and touch us, I pray. We'll thank you for all you do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And amen. Thank you. Amen. Let me see you. Now, I don't know if I'll get through this today, but I'd like to, but uh, maybe not. But we want to deal with this thing of not only how that there was the commands that were attached to the Exodus that gave them victory. But still, would you listen to me? Let me get your attention. The commands that were attached to the Exodus that gave them victory. Those three things had to be practiced if they were to have victory when they got into the land of Canaan. That day had to be remembered. And then secondly, that day had to be revisited. And then that day had to be rehearsed. We dealt with those things in the last two weeks. I want to deal today now with not only that commands that were attached to the Exodus, but there is the cloud that accompanied them in their entrance. I think it's interesting if you look at chapter 13 and verse 20. And they took their journey. Look at chapter 15 and uh, verse number chapter 15 it is. Uh, if I find what I'm looking for, chapter 16 it is. Verse number 1. And they took their journey. Look at chapter 17 and verse number 1. And all the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed. And so after they got under the blood of the Lamb, after they got redeemed, after they got saved, uh, they got on a journey. I think we miss that statement a lot. The moment you get saved, you get on a journey. Amen. I remember when I first got saved, I'm here the happy good ones. It's always been one of my favorite uh, I hear them old good men say uh, won't take nothing from a journey down. Yeah. Amen. But uh, they, they didn't sing it right. They were faithfully believing the fallen grace. Got to make it to heaven somehow. They say, well, those words are right. Thank like God, once you get saved, uh, you're going. Amen. Amen. That's same time. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. I can say it won't take nothing from a journey now. I got to make it to heaven, and I know how. Amen. Amen. Well, they're on a journey. You and I, once we get saved, we start a journey. Yeah. This world is not our home. Right. We're going to just journey through it. Uh, some of you have been on your journey. I've been on my journey now 41 years. How many have been on the journey beyond 40 years? Seven of the crowd beyond 40 years been on the journey. Peter said this. He said, if you call upon the Father who without respect to person, uh, judge it according to your words, pass the time of your soul journeying here 
in fear. We're just sojourners here. Right. This is not my home. This is not your home. I'm a stranger and I'm a pilgrim and I'm an alien in this world. But thank God there's a home waiting and I'm journeying toward my home. Amen. Amen. Well, look here just a minute now this morning about this cloud. Look a few things about this cloud. Let me talk to you about the cloud this morning. Let me give you five things about this cloud. Well, let me say number one, look at this. He said that God led him through the cloud. We'll see that in a minute. But this cloud represented the presence of God. It represented, it was a visible sign of the presence of the invisible God. In other words, they couldn't see God, but God gave them a way, thank God, to know that he was still among them. Amen. This was a visible sign of an invisible God. God is going to take them uh, to a place of complete and total victory. Amen. Right. That's what it's going to do. The cloud was not given. Listen this closely. Help me, Lord. The cloud was not given until they had been delivered from Egypt. Amen. Amen. Right. Get a hold of that. Yeah. In other words, first, they had to get under the blood Amen. before they could get under Amen. the cloud. Yeah. The blood spoke of justification. The cloud spoke of sanctification. Yeah. And you'll not get sanctified until you've been justified. Amen. This is God's yeah. biblical way. It was Calvary and then Pentecost. Yeah. That was God's biblical way. And that is the way of salvation. It is conversion and then receiving the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. Thank God. Well, that's God's experimental way. Paul said, in whom uh, uh, he also trusted. After that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believe, you are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, uh, unto the redemption of the purchased possession, unto uh, the praise of his glory. Well, you've got to get under the blood Amen. before you can receive the Holy Ghost. Now, you said, preacher, you think this cloud is symbolic of the Holy Ghost? Well, I know it is. And by the time we get done, I think we'll prove that. Now, let me, let me slow down for a little minute here. I'm going to turn it off so I'm going to keep up with me. I'm trying to preach too fast. I'm trying to get in that gear. And I believe it's going to have this take time this morning. Bless the Lord. Yeah. Now, listen to me just a minute now. Uh, you got the work. You do realize that salvation always has to do with the Trinity. And when I speak of the Trinity, you and I, as Baptists, are Trinitarians. Right. We believe in the Trinity. We believe in one God, but that one God is manifested in three persons. Right. There's not three gods. Right. It's not God the Father, God the Son, right. and God the Holy Ghost. Right. It makes you sound like three gods. It's God the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. One God manifested in three persons. Amen. And listen, our salvation has to do with all three persons. Amen. Amen. Our personage is in the Spirit, in the, the Trinity. Listen, Peter said this. He said, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. There's the Father. That's what he said, uh, through, uh, uh, unto uh, uh, the sanctification of the Spirit, that's the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. So you've got Father, Son, and Holy Ghost involved in our salvation. Amen. Now that's the anti-time. The time is reported in the Old Testament that, that the anti-type might be fully revealed in the New Testament. Amen. And so in Exodus chapter 1 through chapter number 11, you've got the work of God the Father. Are you with me? It's God planning and purposing their deliverance. Amen. Amen. God the Father is planning and purposing their deliverance. And I'm getting ahead of myself here, but may I say, before the foundation of the world, God the Father planned and God the Father purposed our deliverance. Amen. Amen. That don't make me a Calvinist. That makes me a Bible believer. Amen. Thank God. So you have the work of God the Father planning and purposing their deliverance. 
Exodus. But then you get to chapter 12 in the book of Exodus. And thank God there is the blood of the Lamb. Amen. There is the type of the anti-type who is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. There were thousands of typical lambs Amen. in the Old Testament. Right. But there is but one Lamb. John pointed him out uh, coming down the banks of the river Jordan. Uh, John said, Behold, uh, the Lamb of God uh, yeah, right. that takes away the yeah. sin uh, yeah. of the world. Yeah. Uh, amen. Uh, so you've got chapter 1 to 11. Uh, you've got the work uh, uh, in uh, God the Father planning uh, and purposing uh, the deliverance of the people. Yeah. In chapter 12, you've got the work of the Lamb. By purchasing uh, the deliverance of the people at the price. Are y'all with me out there? Yeah. You just ran back rather comfortable. Amen. Amen. So you've got the work of the Lamb uh, taking his own blood uh, and carrying it into the mercy seat uh, and sprinkling it on the mercy seat of God to effectuate uh, the purchase price uh, of the deliverance of the people. Yeah. And now I'm told you, salvation is a work of Trinity. Amen. 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 It's got to be something to carry it all to us. Amen. To get it to us and provide it to us. Amen. In chapter 1 to 11 of Exodus, it's a work of God the Father. In chapter 12, it's a work of God the Son. And then in chapter number 13 on, the cloud is a type of God the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. I'm glad when he went away, he didn't leave Amen. us alone. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm glad he brought one time, God sent one back to make real and deliver our thing, God. What he's already done at the cross in time and in eternity in the past. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes. Hallelujah. Help me so much. Amen. 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 This uh, cloud speaks of the, the Holy Ghost. Let's look at that cloud a minute and ask ourselves this question. Do we have one, thank God, with us that will do for us what the cloud did for them? May I say this? Uh, uh, they can see the cloud. Uh, you and I can't see it, uh, but it's just as real. Yeah, hey, man. Man. May I say this this evening, this morning? Uh, God was no more with them in the Old Testament uh, than He's with us uh, in the New Testament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, man. Man. The same God, thank God, that walked uh, with them in the old uh, walks with us in the new. Uh, he don't yeah. just walk with us. Uh, he walked with them uh, in the old. Uh, the thank God He don't walk with us in the new. He walks in us. Yeah. Amen. Our fellowship with God is far more intimate as New Testament believers than it was with the Old Testament believer in that God was above them, but thank God He's in us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Let me say number one, five things about this cloud. Let me talk to you number one about the gift this cloud pictured. The gift this cloud pictured. Nowhere and nowhere do I find, not one verse of scripture do I find that this God even suggests that they ask for this cloud. Amen. It was a gift from the heart of God. Amen. Amen. They didn't even know they needed it. Amen. But God knew. Thank God. They were going to need something to help them through their journey. Amen. May I say to you and I, it ain't our asking that caused the Holy Ghost to come. Amen. You know that? It ain't something we did or something we said. I want you to listen to me. If you've got some kind of Pentecostal background, some kind of uh, an all shop background, that's exactly what it is. That they think you get the Holy Ghost by asking, pleading, rolling, begging, seeking the Holy Ghost. I want to tell you something this morning. They didn't get the 
cloud that way. That's right. Uh, Amen. The cloud came as a gift of God. Amen. Because of his acceptance of the word of his son at Calvary. That's right. Amen. Amen. John 7 37. The Bible said this in that last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He said, For now, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. He said, uh, He said that this spake he of the Holy Ghost. Uh, for, the son, for the Son had not yet been uh, glorified, the Spirit had not yet been given, because that Jesus had not yet been glorified. Help me out there. Bless you, God. Amen. Amen. Uh, but thank God, Acts chapter number 2. Uh, Paul, or Peter said this. Uh, he said this that you see uh, right now is the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Uh, but he said for this reason, because that Jesus being at the right hand of God, yeah. the Father exalted. Uh, and God poured this out upon me. Yeah. 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 Uh, Jesus uh, asked but one gift of God. Amen. Jesus asked the one gift of God for the believer. Amen. That upon their getting saved, he said, I will pray. He said, I'm getting ready to go to my Father, and I will pray that they will give you another cup of Amen. Hallelujah. Forever. Amen. Yes, sir. And when Jesus got at the right hand of the Father, his blood was accepted. His work was accepted. God said, okay, I'll send back now the Holy Spirit. I'll send back the gift of the Holy Ghost of God. It's not what you do. It's not what I do. That's right. It's what God did in response Amen. to the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Maybe he's out in the yard. No, he's sitting out there on the front door. Can't see him. Right. 
You seeking the Holy Ghost when He already lives in you is the fact that you have never believed the truth of God. Amen. That's All it. these people this morning that's trying to quote unquote get the Holy Ghost. They done got him. Amen. The minute you got saved, you got him. You didn't get a little bit of him, thank God. You got all of him. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's good, preacher. I got all of God this morning. When I got Jesus Christ, I got the Father. I got the Son. Amen. And I got the Holy Ghost. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise God. This is the gift that God that's pictured in this cloud. God gave it without them having to ask for it. I'm going to say this, I'll come to say the truth. Holy Ghost wasn't given for a sign, nor a shout, nor a show. Amen. He was given for service. That's it. Amen. 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 I remember Brother Sammy Allen used to say, just because I shout, don't mean that I'm full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's good. He said, but don't mean not either. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Bless you. <laughs> you might shout. I've seen people shout, and I knew they were full of Holy Ghost. Yeah. <laughs> Bless it, Lord. Amen. And not for a sign. Uh, you know, if you ain't, I ain't out getting out of context. Bless it, God. You ain't speaking in tongues, you ain't got the sign. Uh, come on. You're right. Come on. Yeah. 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 The Jews require a sign. Yeah. We walk by faith, is what the Bible said. Yeah. I don't need a sign. Amen. Amen. Hey, show us a sign. Jesus said, okay, I'll give you a sign. Whereas Jonah was three days and three nights in the well's belly. So shall us yes, sir. Amen. Amen. three days and three Amen. nights in the heart of the earth. He envisioned it up. And he said, if you can figure out what happened to Jonah, you can figure out what's going to happen to me. Amen. <laughs> Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the well. Bless it, Lord. And he spit him up. Jesus is saying, I'm going to be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Right. But the earth's going to release me, and I come back out of it. That's the last sign any of you is going to get. Hey, hey, Let me stop just a minute. Yeah. It stems, it's uh, it, that's what's leading uh, our church into the Antichrist. Well, yes, he yeah. He's coming with all power and sign. Yeah. And lying wonders. Yeah. Hey, Amen. Yes, sir. Yeah. Bless you, Lord. 
Bible said it was a pillar, not a pillow. That's what we call pillars back home. We don't say pillows. I'm sure that some of y'all don't even. It wasn't a pillow where you go up all that day. It was what? A pillow. Well, there's a pillar and a pillow. He talked about a pillow and talked about a pillar. And he said that cloud was like a pillar. And it means a cloud. It looked different than all of the clouds. Yeah. Hey, man. Its size was different. Yeah. Its structure was different. Its shape was different. Yeah. Hey, Amen. It had probably some kind of big mushroom looking thing either at the top or the bottom, probably the top. And it was a, like a pillar come straight down over that tabernacle. Amen. And it didn't look like nothing else. Yeah. They knew it was different than all the other clouds. Amen. May I say, they took mimicry. Yeah. They took mockery. Yeah. They took manufacturing. Yeah. It was a supernatural cloud. Yeah. Amen. 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 Yeah. And this world has tried to mimic yeah. and mold yeah. and manufacture yeah. a cloud. Yeah. But it yeah. don't listen. It can't be manufactured. Yeah. Yeah. It can't be mimicked. Yes, yeah. sir. It's God's cloud. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 
man. That's right. Yes, sir. Yes, brother. Amen. You know, I call it fear. It created faith. Created faith. And all they said were not alone. God, if you study it real closely, God was in that cloud. We can see that later. The veil of God it created faith that God is among us. Well, how do we know God's among us as New Testament believers? They can see it. How do we know? I want you to read this. I'm quoting. I want you to read it. Look at 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. You know about this was a familiar cloud. It was familiar to the sight. It was visible. 1 John chapter 3, and verse 24. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us hath, by the Spirit which he had given us. Right. Hey. Look at verse chapter 4, verse 13. Hereby know we that we dwell in him, and he in us, because he has given us all his spirit. Listen, how I know God lives in me. It's the spirit. Hey. Not a spirit. The spirit. Amen. Now so listen at me closely. Could they see the cloud? Yeah. And did it not let them know that God was among them? Yeah. Yeah. All right. yeah. I don't understand people who say they're saved and profess to be born again who are supposed to have the Spirit and yet they don't know that they're saved. I don't understand that. Right, right, brother. That's good, yeah. I don't understand that. If his spirit lives in us, it is just as knowable right. as the cloud was knowable over them. Amen. Amen, Amen brother. Yeah. They could see it by sight. And I will tell you, think of one person in this building that I can absolutely testify 100% for that they're saved. Yeah. I'm not doubting you, that's not what I'm doing. But I know he lives in me. Amen. You know why? Because I know, thank God, I have his spirit. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 You never say to anybody, you just got a spirit in your day. I'll tell you, I've got his spirit. You say, how do you know that? Let me stop just a minute. Paul said in Galatians 3 and Colossians 3 that we're the circumcision which worship God in spirit and have no confidence in the flesh. Amen. Uh, yeah. Are y'all out there? Yeah. John 3 3, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And John 4, 24, God is the Spirit with a capital S, and ye that worship Him must worship Him in spirit with a little S and in truth. Amen. Your human spirit is born dead. Right. It don't know God. Right. It can't love God. It can't understand God. It can't serve God. And it can't worship God. Right. right. All out there. Amen. Amen. Bragging on Jesus means no more to you than bragging on George Washington. That's right. That's right, yeah. Because you don't know him. Yeah. He's dead to you. You're lost. Sing about him, don't mean a thing. Preach about him, don't mean a thing. Somebody get up and testify and get happy about Jesus and get speech, waving their hands and blessing the Lord, don't mean a thing. You know what? You're dead. Amen. You can't worship God. God's a spirit. And your spirit's dead toward God. Who is the spirit? Your human spirit's dead toward God. And it's not until the Holy Spirit births your human spirit. Right. right. When the Holy Spirit births your human spirit, then your spirit's made alive to God. Yeah. Go out there. Hey, Amen. Man. And when your human spirit's made alive to God by the Holy Spirit, then the ministry of the Holy Spirit is to exalt God's Son. Amen. John 10, 15, and 16. The ministry of God's Holy Spirit is to lead and guide us into truth about 
That's right. Amen. 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 That's his ministry. Amen. Amen. I'm listening. Holy Spirit, don't pray with the Holy Spirit. Right. Amen. Right. 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 Holy Spirit writes on the sun. Amen. 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 And so, when your human spirit's dead, and the Holy Spirit writes it over the Son, and your human spirit's dead to the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, no matter how much praying gets done, you can't worship because it's all dead to you. Right, man, right. Yeah. Amen. But once your Holy Spirit bursts over human spirit, when the Holy Spirit begins to write on God's Son, you know it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And the Holy Spirit brought your human spirit alive unto God, and you know God. Then you can worship when the Holy Spirit brings on the Son of God. Amen. Amen. As the test of Christianity is worship. Amen. Absolutely. It's not going to church. It's not being an officer in the church. It's not grandpa was a preacher or, or mama was a preacher. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> it's not I'm a good man or a good woman or, or I'm smart and intelligent and no, no, no. It's none of that. The absent test of Christianity is do you love Jesus and is that love when the Holy Ghost prays on Jesus. Amen. 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 As the test of Christianity Amen. is worship. So what makes me believe some of you, I'm not preaching to people who's not here, I'm preaching to what makes me believe some of you who are not saved. Bless you, Lord. I've been here 30 years and I've never seen you worship God one time. Else. I'm talking to everybody's band in the fields, the richer, right on up to the front, right here, the brand, and back to the vice, one in the back. Help if, us God. if God lives in you somewhere, you will worship God. Amen. 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 Somewhere your heart will get consumed with Jesus Christ, who he is, and what he did for you. Amen. Amen. Romans 8, 9, and report again, but you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be the spirit of Christ dwelleth in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if the spirit be in you, in, in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Verse 11. If the spirit of him that raised up Christ Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he will also that same spirit quicken your mortal body. Amen. 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 Somewhere the spirit that lives in you will quicken that mortal body and you begin to worship God in that mortal body. Yeah, amen. Don't tell me you're going to wait to worship God when you die if you ain't never been burdened and moved to do it while you live. That's right. Amen. Yes, Yeah. 
I'll give you this truth and finish up. I'm going to finish the thing tonight. Well, how old? Or this morning, whatever it is. Make the mark for it. Amen. I'm Genesis. That won't work for you. Excellent. Not only was it a familiar spirit in that it had a familiar sight, but it's a familiar spirit in that it had a familiar sound. It had a familiar sight, it was visible. It had a familiar sound, it was vocal. God spoke. That's right, brother. Out of this cloud. Amen. Look, you will, in Exodus 25. Just all I'm going to get cut. Exodus 25. Look at verse 22. Exodus 25, 22. Look at verse 20. And the cherubim shall stretch forth their wings on high, covering the mercy seat with their wings. And their faces shall look one to another, toward the mercy seat shall the fifth faces of the cherubim's be. Thou shalt put the mercy seat above upon the ark, in the ark thou shalt put the testimony that I shall give thee. And I will, I will meet with thee and will commune with thee from above the mercy seat from between the two cherubims which are upon the ark of the testimony of all things which I give thee in commandment of the children of Israel. Now stay with me thinking just a minute. God said, I will commune with thee. In other words, I will speak to you from those, between those cherubims. Well, where did God speak from? Look at chapter 33. Chapter 33. And look, if you will, please, in verse 9. And it came to pass, as Moses entered into the tabernacle, the cloudy pillar descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle. And the Lord walked, right. talked with Moses. Where did he talk from? Out of the cloud. Right. Look, if you will, please, in Psalm 99. Stay with me just a minute now. Psalm 99, look where he talked from. Psalm 99, and look at verse 5. <clears throat> Exalt ye the Lord our God, and worship at his footstool, for he's holy. <clears throat> Moses and Aaron among his priests, and Samuel among them called upon his name. They called upon the Lord, and he answered them. He spake unto them in the cloud and pillar. But not only was this cloud a familiar cloud, because it's familiar to their sight, it was visible, but it was familiar to their sound, it was spoken. In other words, God spake from this cloud. Amen. And no <coughs> Amen. Amen. And if does it not say seven times in the book of Revelation, he that hath an ear, let him hear, That's right. let him hear what? The Spirit. That's right. God speaks through his Spirit. Amen. 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 If God has speak to you, that be through the Spirit. Thank God for those days when I heard the word of God. Amen. I've never heard it until one day. Amen. But God, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let me stop just a minute to put a king just in case there's some of them sweet old princess church Christ will watch it. <laughs> they say that the Spirit is not a person equal to the Father and the Son. But only a person can speak. Amen. Huh. That's right. Right. You listen, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, these three, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, of course, the Word, the Son, these three are one. one. No, they're not, they're not three separate, they're one and the same, they're equal.
So, God, don't speak in a big loud voice. God speaks with a small still voice. That's good. You better listen to the voice of God while they speak. Amen. If they can sit in this church, want to listen to the voice of God, want to repent, when they want to acknowledge their sin, acknowledge their rebellion, and their stubborn will, and their pride, and their empty way, and then listen to God, and God off into sin, and probably some of them go to hell. Because you want to listen at the voice of the Spirit of God. I don't know how God speaks, and I don't know when God speaks, and I don't know where God speaks. Sometimes you can see a little bit, most times you can't. You can't always see what God's doing. Right. They could. Let me say this, and I'm done. This one, I ain't done there, but I'm just one point. This was a familiar cloud. Number two, talk about the guaranteed cloud promised. It was a fiery cloud. Look back, if you will, please, chapter 13. Exodus. I'm going to give you this because we'll take a minute to deal with it. And then we'll uh, pick up the last truth next week. Exodus 13. Look at verse 22. He took God from verse 21. And the Lord went before them by day in the pillar of cloud to lead them away, and by night in the pillar of fire to give them light. They go by day and by night. It was a fiery cloud, literally. I read the other day that this, this way was a cloud of fire. That it was a uh, it was the image of volcanoes that was in that place. Made the cloud look like a little fire. Isn't that stupid? Isn't that stupid? I don't know if we'll believe the Bible. Yeah, right. right. I'll be a thing burning today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, uh, Buster College, my Buster Heath from now in Colorado, they'll be home about two weeks. He said that smoke up there is getting to go. And the uh, smoke from California is coming to settle in there, and the fire is coming to California. He says, oh, I've never my farm before he's out. He said, it's a smoky heat back. And he said, uh, he said, preacher, he said, that smoke's just so bad in King Horn City. And he said, that fire was in the woods. And uh, this, that, that, that fire, and that's, this, this thing, this fire was in the cloud. Here's what he said. If I'm getting my mind back, I'll start to say, he said this. He said, the days are 97 degrees. And he said, not fall against the low forest, only mid forest. That's how that Well, as they travel through this wilderness, their days in this Egyptian desert, their days will get to be 100 degrees. And it will fall at night time down in the 30s and 40s in those Egyptian lands. Not only that, that cloud of the day of getting ahead of itself, that cloud of the day, we'll see it later, that cloud sheltered them from the heat of the sun. But at night time, that fire warmed him. Hey, man. God kept her. God kept her about 70 degrees around. Hey, man. 40 years, God kept her warming, warming the night and cooling the day. Ain't that right? God had an air conditioning system on for man to come out. Hey, man. But that fire was for the light. It lived their night time. They literally saw in the camp by that fire. Aren't you glad no matter how dark it gets in this world? That's right, brother. Yes, sir. The spirit of God's air light. Hallelujah. The word of God's air light. See, they had they had a fiery light. We've got a fiery light too. Thy word is a lamp in my feet and a light in my path. Amen. Entrance of thy word is given light. Jeremiah said his word was like a fire shut up in my home. <laughs> I've got a fire that might lead me to. Amen. And this country, the Spirit of God gives us light in this world. Let me say this, I'm done. I'll see this later, but when that cloud, of, when it led them out down there to the Red Sea, the Egyptians pursued them, the cloud went before them. The Egyptians got closer, cloud got up, moved to the back of the cave, got between the Egyptians and the Israelites. And the Bible said, the, you said, I don't understand it, don't you? The Bible said the Egyptians couldn't see it. The cloud made their side dark, while it made the other side light. Carnal yeah. mind sees not the things of the Spirit of God, it's spiritually discerned. Right. You ain't saved, you can't see the things of God. 
That's yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The same spirit that makes it light to us makes it dark to you. Yeah. And the same spirit that will take us into a land of light forever will shut others off in a land of darkness forever. Amen. This ain't which way I hoped it would be. I'm telling you, there's some help here for it. Amen. No matter how hard it's not, God's light will not go away. Amen. You believe that? So listen to this. How are you going to get to a land of victory? We just got two truths out of five this morning. How are you going to get to a land of victory? You know what took them to the land of victory? How many knows what took them to the land of victory? The son and died of the blood of the lamb paid the penalty of sin. But the cloud is taken and thank God to the land of victory. I like to talk about how God lived with that cloud next week. He lived. How do we got to Amen. He liberated them in chapter 12. Did he live in chapter 13?